Hello everyone, this is Joshua Casey Garland, the Financial Shepherd, Certified Financial Planner, owner of Shepherd Wealth Management. I'm in beautiful Newport, Kentucky, walking across the bridge to downtown Cincinnati to enjoy the banks. Also wanted to kind of talk to you all a little bit today about not only how the market has been reacting so far this year, but also talking about my favorite pastime, and I think a lot of people's favorite pastime in America, which is baseball. Cincinnati Reds got off to a really rough start this year in 2022, just like the stock market. However, seeds of recoveries are planted on times like what we're in right now. So I can't wait to make a parallel between my favorite sport when I played as a young man growing up, uh, loving the game of baseball, and what I do now as a professional advisor and working with thousands of clients. Um, very excited topic today. I think you all enjoy it. I can't wait to share it with you. Let's get going. We're right outside the Cincinnati Red Stadium, Great American Ballpark. We're sitting next to some Hall of Famers, Joe Morgan, the great Pete Rose, and Johnny Bench, some of my all-time favorite Reds players. Um, it's just a beautiful area to be here in the Cincinnati Banks area. None of this existed when I was a young man growing up and uh, watching the Reds play on a, a regular basis and playing baseball all summer long. I'm very excited to be here today. All kinds of restaurants, bars, people, it's just an exciting atmosphere. Cincinnati is growing and booming and this is going to be a great episode. Uh, Tony Perez. So we're on the uh, Ohio side of the Ohio River now. You can see Great American Ballparks just behind me. It's absolutely gorgeous outside today. And I wanted to kind of kick things off for today's podcast with a phrase from one of my all-time favorite movies, A League of Their Own. Tom Hanks, uh, one of the main characters there, was asked um, about what he loved about baseball. And he said the heart is what makes it great. And he's absolutely right about that. As a young man playing baseball, it's something I always thought I would, I would do for a career, being a professional baseball player. Uh, but the reality is, is baseball is a game of failure. If you lose, if you, if you're a hitter and you don't get a hit 70% of the time, you're going to go to the Hall of Fame if you can do that consistently over a long period of time. And what I love about that is it, it makes you have to have the right sort of temperament and mentality every time you step on the field, every time you pick up a bat, every time that you prepare yourself for the next opponent. It's very, very similar to the stock market investing for a long period of time. Anything can happen over the short term. But the great news about being a long-term investor that has a game plan that's investing for your goals, needs, and wishes throughout life, uh, you are a long-term investor. Over the last 100 years, the stock market has been positive 75% of the time. It will be down 25% of the time. And we as human beings, we only feel the really bad parts of the market. Behavioral finance has taught us that we feel our losses twice as much as we feel good about making positive returns in the market. The reality is we're getting positive returns more often than not. Whereas in the game of baseball, again, if you fail 70% of the time as a hitter, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame someday if you can do that consistently. But we as investors, we're not playing a 162-game season. We get to play this game all throughout the year, every single year, over and over again. And the stock market's really just a live autopsy of human emotions if you just look at it on a day-in and day-out basis because humans around the globe are 
participating in. So we have we have to take a step back, just like hitters have to take a step out of the batter's box, just like pitchers to kind of do a little circle around the mound. They're doing that so they can control their emotions, their temperament. And we as investors need to consider doing the same thing, specifically in times like what we're in right now, where you're seeing the S&P down double digits, the NASDAQ's down more than 20% in a full blown correction, um, and all kinds of world news and headlines that just make us feel bad about the moment. Historically high inflation, Federal Reserve's having a difficult time you know, controlling inflation because of the war that's going on in Ukraine causing commodity prices and oil and energy uh, to be at all time highs or near all time highs. Uh, the energy sector itself is the only positive sector in the S&P 500. So we get bombarded with these messages on our phone, on the news, the TV that we watch. Um, just as you know, a, a baseball player that loses control over their emotions, throws their helmet, breaks a bat, um, gets into a fight with another player. You know, baseball, just like in life, has, has this karma effect. And when you see those things happen, you tend to see you know, more bad things will continue to happen until they can get their emotions under control. We as investors need to be able to take a step back, have a game plan that can control your emotions, your temperament, and you'll set yourself up for a lot of success overall. So one of the things I love about the game of baseball is they keep awesome records and statistics. Baseball has been a game that's been around for over 100 years at this point. And the Cincinnati Reds were the very first Major League Baseball franchise. And the Reds have had a whole lot of history, obviously being the oldest franchise in baseball. Some years have been absolutely terrible. They've had great stretches through the, the big red machine in the 70s. Um, then there was another lull until they finally won a World Series in 1990 with some unbelievable players, young talent like Barry Larkin right here in Cincinnati, Moeller High School grad, uh, Paul O'Neill, um, Eric Davis, and Chris Sabo, the list goes on and on. But as a owner of a baseball franchise, I've never been one, but uh, there's been movies such as Moneyball that speak to how owners use resources to compete with teams that have more resources like the Yankees or the Boston Red Sox. And what the uh, Oakland Athletics and this movie called Moneyball were able to do is use the statistics that were available to them to acquire players that would meet the goals that they had for the franchise as far as scoring runs and on-base percentage. They were able to look at a game that's been around for over 100 years in a different lens than anybody else has ever thought about doing before. And although the, the Oakland Athletics weren't able to actually win the World Series, they got very, very close to being able to play for a World Series championship and compete against the teams like the Yankees and the Boston Red Sox of the world that have you know, unlimited resources. So we as investors, we're investing in a marketplace with humans across the globe. And human beings, again, are, are hardwired with fear and greed. They can get very emotional. And they tend to forget about all the long-term statistics of the market. You know, most recently I sent out an email to all of my clients to help them understand um, a little bit more about the statistics of the market. Going back from 1980 all the way through present day, that's 42 years worth of market history just right there. And the market's average drawdown in the S&P in any one year is 14%, which means some years the drawdown is going to be a lot worse than that. Some years it won't be as bad, but the average drawdown in the S&P on any year is, is actually 14% going back to 1980. So 32 out of those 42 years, surprisingly, to most of my clients, and probably most of you watching and listening to this right now, when the market was positive, 32 out of those 42 years, even though the average drawdown in the S&P 500 was 14%. So 32 out of 42 is 76% of the time. Well, the great news about that is if you actually look at the market over a 100-year period of time, you'll start to find that over the long run, statistics are way in your favor for investing in the long run. Whereas, again, a baseball player that's a hitter, if they fail 70% of the time, they're going to be in the Hall of, Hall of Fame. Baseball is a game of failure. Stock investing for the long run is almost assured success with the right discipline, with the right mentality, and with the right information. So when we can get the right information, we can get our temperament in the right place, and start to make decisions for ourselves, it's almost assured to lead to long-term success. All you need is the right team of people and the right information to do that.
So here in Cincinnati, just outside of Great American Ballpark, it's funny that Great American is actually the, the name on the stadium. Um, specifically for me as an investment professional, you know, in almost every major city I've ever been in, over my 10 plus year career as an advisor, almost in every city, the tallest building in that city was an insurance company. And there's a reason for that. Obviously, people, business owners, we need to have coverage for our homes, our toys, our businesses, etc. And Warren Buffett himself, which is a, uh, an idol of mine from a professional career standpoint, nobody's really had you know, a better 60 plus year run at helping people make good financial decisions than Mr. Warren Buffett himself. But there's a reason why Warren Buffett owns Geico and, and actually purchased and acquired uh, the majority ownership back in the 70s is because he knew the statistics of business owners, of individuals. That's what makes the insurance companies so profitable over a long period of time. So if we're going to insure, let's say, our own selves, our life insurance, well, the insurance company is going to pull a whole bunch of people that are about my age, that live in cities like I live in that do the same sorts of things that I do, and within a reasonable percentage, they're going to know about how long I'm going to live, and that's how they're able to price that policy. And as they take those premiums, they're not just sitting on it. They're not just leaving it in cash, um, waiting for the day for you know the accident to happen where that insurance coverage is now going to my family members. They're taking that capital and they're investing it. Why is that? It's because they know it's unlikely that I'm going to need to collect on that policy anytime soon. And by the way, an insurance company does not have a heartbeat. They're just an entity. They expect to be around indefinitely forever. So they're investing that money like they're going to be around forever. Hence, you get naming rights on stadiums. You get the tallest building in almost every major city across the country. Now, we as investors, we can take a page from that playbook and say, okay, in the short run, I don't need this money. I'm not collecting really any interest at all these days at my checking and savings account, your favorite financial institution where you're parking that cash. I actually need to have a long-term game plan so I can ensure some of the things that I would like to be able to do later on in life, such as having a comfortable retirement, being able to cover my daughter's weddings in the future, um, have a little fun so I can enjoy coming to ballparks and maybe going out to Goodyear, Arizona one day and actually enjoying spring training and playing some golf. Like those are things that are in my mind when I think about why I'm investing for the long run. But investing for the long run, just like trying to make it to the major leagues, is very, very difficult to do. Not everybody can play baseball you know, at this specific level, even though we might love to. Um, however, with the right discipline, with the right information, with the right team around you, helping you make good decisions, you can set yourself up just like Warren Buffett, just like some of these large insurance companies and have long-term success because the market over the long run is a great asset. Time is the best asset to have for investors because over the long run, the market again is going to be positive way more often than it's going to be negative. It's just a question of how you handle that adversity. Just like the Reds are going through right now, they started out 3-22 and and since uh, about the beginning of May, they've been one of the better teams in Major League Baseball. It takes time for talent to actually produce in a way that you would like to see it produce, just like it can take time for companies to figure out how they're going to deal with historically high inflation, a supply chain that's been broken due to the COVID pandemic, a war going on in Ukraine, which is keeping you know, inflation and gas prices and commodity at near all-time highs here at the moment and continuing to peak. The only thing that's constant in life is change. The only thing that's constant in the business world is also change. And those folks that have a game plan for how to adapt with that, how to roll with the punches, how to keep yourself in a position to minimize the effect of those negative environments and still be in a position to benefit from the long term is what long-term investing is all about. And it's the exact same way that my Cincinnati Reds here are eventually going to have an awesome, repeatedly winning franchise 
We're just outside of Paul Brown Stadium here. I'm looking at it over to my right. Um, and for decades, the Bengals were the laughing stock of the National Football League. But with time, persistence, using the right information, surrounding themselves with the right people, they eventually get the right coaches, the right players, all at the exact right time. They can afford them financially, and they're setting themselves up for a tremendous season here in 2022. So we're hanging out right by the Ohio River, walking along the banks, uh, right in between Great American Ballpark and Paul Brown Stadium. And right now, with the year that started out in 2022, it's difficult for me to be a long-term Cincinnati Reds baseball fan. I've been through a lot of these types of years, but I'm still sticking with my, my hometown Cincinnati Reds team. In addition to that, for my long-term investing clients, right now feels like um, the pain's never gonna end. Almost every day, seemingly, and literally for seven straight weeks up until the past couple weeks, we've seen negative returns in pretty much all the major averages. So doom and gloom is definitely the theme so far this year for 2022, whether you're a Cincinnati Reds baseball fan or a long-term investor in the stock market. However, it's times like this where controlling your emotions and your temperament are by far and away the best secret weapon that you can have as an investor. So how do I go about controlling my emotions, I seek out information and data. And one of the pieces of data I'd love to share with you all right now comes from the Hartford Fund. And if you were to miss just the best 10 days of the last 30 years in the stock market, just missing those 10 best days in the last 30 years, your returns would be cut in half. Furthermore, if you miss 30 of those best days in the last 30 years, your returns are reduced by an astonishing 83%. So what do I take away from that? Well, I take away from that that being an investor for the long term, staying invested, having the discipline and the right temperament to allow me to stay invested for the long term is what's going to allow me to produce the types of returns that I feel um, are appropriate for the risk level that I'm willing to take, not only for myself, my family, but also for my clients. So outside of controlling your temperament, a couple things that investors can do to take advantage of moments like what we're in right now, very volatile times. The first thing that they can do is pretty much what all of you have probably done or are doing right now through your company's 401k plan. Every two weeks in general, people are getting paid and a part of that money is going into their retirement account, the company 401k plan, and is getting invested automatically. And I would be willing to bet that almost all of you watching and listening to this right now probably don't check what the S&P 500 is doing when you're getting paid. You probably could care less. And the reason why you probably care less is because you have enough money coming in with those paychecks to cover your lifestyle costs, to pay the bills, the mortgage, take the kids out the skyline, maybe go check a res game or something like that. Um, so you're able to cover the lifestyle through that paycheck and you had enough to go into a long-term retirement account such as your company K plan. And by having the discipline to be able to do that consistently year after year, paycheck after paycheck, what you're doing is what we call dollar cost averaging. At some point in time like what we're in right now you're going to be able to invest in those positions at much lower price levels than what you were able to do last year when the market was producing positive returns and really for the last three years we've had nothing but double digit returns in the S&P 500 which is um, very welcome but it's not exactly something that's going to consistently repeat itself year in and year out but those years you were buying at higher prices right now you're getting in at a lower price so your average price of the investments is going to be much lower than somebody that just took money in one shot and threw it all into the market. And the other thing investors can do outside of dollar cost averaging is something called rebalancing, which is just simply taking some positions, either profits or smaller losses, and taking that capital and reapplying it somewhere else that is has been oversold. So those are two very, uh, very powerful uh, strategies to take advantage of times like what we're in right now. But these times don't last forever, just like you know, bull markets up and to the right don't last forever either. We need as individual investors to be able to get this type of data so we can control our emotions and ultimately make better decisions. So hopefully this type of information is helpful and if not make sure you surround yourself with people like me to get you in a position to benefit from the long-term opportunities the market provides.
we made our way just in front of Paul Brown Stadium. Uh, absolutely cannot wait for the stadium to be packed full of Who Day fans and, and watching the Bengals take the field and competing for another Super Bowl title. But as we were walking you know, along the Cincinnati banks here, one of the things that came to my mind is how the Cincinnati Reds uh, really did a, a massive reshuffle, massive rebalance uh, with their roster from the 2021 season to the 2022 season. A whole bunch of excellent players that they just couldn't afford to keep around on a long-term contract basis. Uh, went on to, to play at other teams that could afford them. And now we have a whole bunch of rookies taking the field with some veterans like a Joey Votto and others for the very first time. And, and we're seeing you know, the results and effects of, of youth and inexperience you know, competing at the highest level uh, with a three win and 22 loss start. But over the last couple of weeks, they've been one of the better teams in, in the National League um, in all professional baseball for that matter. And it just simply takes time for those, those resources um, to begin to work together to achieve things that ownership would expect them to be able to achieve. But certainly it's not gonna happen overnight. Just like what we're experiencing right now from an investment standpoint, I would love to be able to flip the switch and take us from from, you know this bear market near recession territories and have everything nice and sunny and moving up and to the right however you know unfortunately none of us as investors have that easy button or switch that we can flip and make the stock market do exactly what we want when we want it to do so what can we do well we can use some principles that have been around for decades so modern portfolio theory is the basis of our approach to long-term investing and basically what modern portfolio theory has been able to prove is that if you can control your asset allocation, which is just a fancy way for saying this is how much of my money is invested in stocks, bonds, and cash, you can actually get very predictable and repeatable performance numbers over a long period of time. And more importantly, you're controlling the risk along the way to be able to achieve that performance. So the most recent example of this, unless you were around in 1929 when the Great Depression happened, uh, the worst year for the stock market other than 1929 was 2008. So the stock market, the S&P 500, which is the 500 uh, biggest, most well-known name companies in the United States, it lost half of its value in one year. So if you left all of your money in the S&P 500, you lost half of it in the year 2008. If you had a growth asset allocation, which for most people is about 70, 75% stock exposure, 25 to 30% fixed income exposure, with that asset allocation in 2008, you would have been down roughly about 35%. So you beat the market by a wide margin, however, it still doesn't feel all that great. The recovery started to happen in March of 2009 through 14, and over that period of time, the stock market had 162% return, which sounds awesome but remember if you lost half of your money in one year in 08 you need at least a hundred percent return the next year just to get back to even and the market did not fully recover in one year it took several years if you were that growth investor with about 75 percent of your money in stocks and 25 percent of your money in fixed income during that recovery you would have saw about 100% return, which again sounds awesome, but importantly, when we blend those periods of time together, the 2008 correction along with the recovery, the stock market was positive 32%, and the growth investor that had, again, 75% stock exposure, and about 25% fixed income exposure, and assuming that that investor kept that asset allocation exactly the same every single year, so they rebalanced. They took the gains that they had in bonds when the stock market was performing poorly and they shifted those gains into equities as equities were depressed if they kept that allocation the same they actually saw a 30 percent return so there's only a two percent difference in performance over the downside of 08 and the recovery what you should take away from that as a long-term investor is that you can get very similar returns to the overall stock market and you can actually take a heck of a lot less risk and in this example that growth investor because they had 25 percent of their money in fixed income, they actually were taking on about 20 to 25% less risk than the overall stock market. So these principles of rebalancing have been around forever and what we're able to do for clients at Shepherd Wealth Management that is different than what we were able to do or what I was able to do for clients at a company like TD Ameritrade and Fidelity that I spent many years at. And I love both companies. They're great places to work. They're great places for people to get 
awesome advice as it relates to things like retirement planning and investing. Um, but unfortunately, as a large company, they are wanting to take the individual advisor risk out of those meetings. And what do I mean by that? I couldn't simply build a portfolio exactly the way that I wanted to for any client at those large institutions. We would have people fill out these suitability surveys and based on their answers, we scored them. And if you were a 60, then you got the exact same performance as everybody else that was a 60 based on that suitability, which meant that you were always gonna have positions in things like fixed income and international stock investments, and of course, you know, US domestic investments as well. At Shepherd Wealth Management, we took everybody out of international positions before 2022, just simply because we saw the opportunities for United States companies being better than international companies. We took most investors, nearly all of them, out of fixed income leading into 2022, simply because we expected uh, interest rates to rise after being at near zero for a very long period of time, and the rising rates were a bad thing for bonds. We replaced international investments, we replaced the traditional fixed income investments with energy positions. Energy has been the only sector of the S&P 500 that's been positive this year. So in hindsight, I wish I would have allocated a lot more money to energy positions for my clients, but we did take positions in them. And even though the market has been negative across all sectors except for energy this year, we have had opportunities to take profits, not just in the energy space, taking profits from some healthcare, taking some profits um, also from defense companies like a Lockheed Martin and some others. We're able to use those gains and reallocate those gains into other parts of the portfolio that have been a laggard so far this year. And the biggest lagging sector has been technology by a very long shot. Technology is the largest sector of the S&P 500. It led the way to all the gains that we've seen in the prior three years leading up to 2022. So yeah, it definitely makes sense that it's one of the worst performing sectors so far this year. But by adding those gains into a sector like technology, we do expect an inevitable recovery for the market and technology should lead the way. So this is a way for us at Shepherd Wealth Management to help clients control risk in even the most volatile times and still keep them in a position to achieve long-term success and positive performance over the inevitable recovery of the stock market. So I hope that you're looking at your portfolio the same way. And if you're not, if your temperament's just kind of getting the better of yourself right now, definitely give us a call, 513 630 2664, and we'll find a solution for you.